Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to go from Adobe Premiere with your edit into DaVinci Resolve ready to start grading. And I'm going to show you, if you're an absolute beginner, exactly how to do that process. It's really simple, but it's not always a smooth ride. So I'm going to show you some of the things that you might come up against and exactly how to fix them. So let's go and take a look. So we're in Adobe Premiere and what I want to do in this first part is to show you as an absolute beginner how easy it is to take this timeline and send it to another system and in our case that's going to be DaVinci Resolve ready to start grading. So we've got our sequence down here. It's kind of cuts, regular cut type sequence. There's a dissolve coming up here as you can see. And there is also something happening down here that is a picture in picture type thing. So we need two layers for that and that's the essence of the program. So we want to get this information to DaVinci Resolve in as quick and easy way as possible. Now the best way to do that is to export an XML. An XML contains all of these edit decisions. Every time I've made an edit in here, the XML knows where that is and it knows which file name the clip belongs to. So it's going to list all these clips in the order they appear with the correct time codes and it will give me on this one, for example, video layer two. So we've got a video layer two here. So that information will come across in the XML as well. And an XML is an industry standard. So it's a common way of exchanging edit information between different systems. It will also take across things like speed changes, resizes, audio levels, effects, and how many video tracks you've used and how many audio tracks, things like that. So how do we actually export that? Well, we go up to file and we say export Final Cut Pro XML. Don't worry that it says Final Cut Pro, it's irrelevant. It's an XML file. XML files can talk to many different systems. So just take the default, and what we're gonna do, it, by default it gives you the title name of your sequence, and I'm just gonna put on the end of here for grade, so we know what it is, and I'm gonna say save. And that is now exporting out a XML of my timeline. It's not exporting any media, it's just taking the information from the timeline, the metadata. So all we have to do now is switch to whatever system we want to go to. So in our case, that's DaVinci Resolve. And in DaVinci Resolve, you have a media pool. So all the clips that we want to use for the grade need to be sat inside this media pool. DaVinci Resolve will not work if those clips are not in there. So in Adobe Premiere, to import material, you open a bin and say File Import, whereas in Resolve, you have the media pool at the bottom, and at the top, you're browsing your hard drives, and you literally drag and drop the clip or the clips that you want to work with but I'm gonna show you an easy way of doing it. So if we go straight to our edit page, so we've got absolutely nothing here. This is a blank project, nothing going on, so it's a brand new project. I'm gonna right click in here. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is also the media pool, but a sort of smaller version of it. And I'm gonna say timeline, import, XML. I'm gonna to point to the XML that we just created and say open. And what happens now is we get this dialog box. So Resolve is being intelligent here. It's having a look at that XML and saying, what do I want to do with it? So the source file, the actual XML is here. Okay, the import timeline is the one from Premiere. So there was two in there, so it's picked the right one. The timeline name, it just gives it the same default name as you've imported. And the master timeline start time code, it's saying is 01 hours. That's actually what the default is here in my edit page. What we're gonna do is override that. So if I say automatically set project settings, it will override this start time code because in Premiere, our time code started at 00 hours. You don't have to worry about it too much. So I'm automatically gonna set the project settings. That will also look at the frame rate. I'm gonna automatically import the source clips into the media pool. So Resolve's gonna do it for me. It's gonna look at the XML, it's gonna see which clips are used in Premiere, and it's gonna automatically bring them into the media pool for me. And it's also gonna use the sizing information. So when we did that picture in picture, we must have done a resize. So I'm gonna bring that information across because the XML has saved that information. My timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080. That has been taken from the Premiere sequence settings that I had. And don't worry about this bit down here, mixed frame rates, we don't need to worry about that. So let's just say okay. And that's it, it's done. It's as simple as that. So we now have all our cuts in the timeline ready to go. So these can now be graded in Resolve by simply clicking on the color page. Okay, and I can now go ahead and just simply start grading these shots. So really, really simple way of bringing them in. Now, that is a very easy way of doing it, and that is all you need to take away as a beginner. 
What I want to do now is move on to a more advanced part and have a look at when things don't go quite to plan. So if we have a look at our picture in picture, it's actually not worked. Okay, so what I want to do in the next section is show you how to fix this and go into a little bit more advanced work when we're working with more complex timelines. So I hope you're enjoying this episode so far and you're learning a lot from it. These episodes don't make themselves. I put a lot of work into these, so there's a lot of preparation. I have to build those timelines to show you all the things that can go wrong and try and explain it the best I can so you get the best experience while you're watching my episodes on YouTube. It takes me a long time to make. It's going to take you no time at all to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscription and hit the notification. Thank you very much. So let's have a look at what went wrong with the XML when we had a look at this picture in picture in Resolve. So if we check our sequence settings, we go sequence settings up here, and we see that we are set to 1920 by 1080. So this is a HD regular timeline. Now our footage is made up of a combination of Ultra HD, 2K and 4K footage. And Premiere can handle that quite happily. So if I just take any clip here, this is a 3840 pixels by 2160. So it's Ultra HD. I can press in, let's do a mark out. And if I just drag and drop that onto the timeline, what Premiere will do is automatically scale it to HD resolution. So Premiere has two different ways in which it can resize images. So if I right hand click on this, you see that it's currently set to scale to frame size, but there's also this option here of set to frame size. Now, when we're on scale to frame size, what Premiere does is it automatically rescales it to be HD, but the effect control doesn't show anything in the scaling. So the scaling is still at 100% because it's rasterizing the image. So it's kind of virtually bringing it into HD resolution instead of ultra HD resolution. Now, if I change that and right click on here and say set to frame size, you see now that the scaling has become 50%. So it's now correctly scaling the image from ultra HD down to a HD size. So this one is gonna give you much better quality. The set to frame size is gonna give you much better quality. So the reason the XML didn't work on the picture in picture was because the XML was reading the information incorrectly. So let's have a look. If we right hand click on here, you can see that we're set to scale to frame size. And let's take a look at the effect properties. And you can see we've got on positioning, we've got some position movement obviously to create our left and right images and the scaling is set to 50%. Now at first glance that would seem correct, but in actual fact, this was an ultra HD image, and so it should be 25%. So let me change the scaling properties. I'm gonna say set to frame size, which is the correct way to do it, and also will give you better quality image. And you now see that 50% scaling is actually this big. So what we need to do is set this to be half of that again, so it's 25%. And now it's correct. Now, if we just set this to set to frame size to start with, we would have gone straight to 25% with our image to create the picture in picture anyway. You can set set to frame size to be a default. So if I go to Premiere Preferences and go to Media, you can see that our default media scaling is currently scaled to frame size. So the first thing you wanna do before you start a project is set to frame size, not scale to frame size. This is gonna give you better quality images and it's gonna make sure your XMLs work correctly. So that's why the XML came across, because the XML actually had a scaling of 50 in here, not 25 that it should have had. So the other reason that all these other clips worked fine, if we just flick to Resolve. So back in Resolve, if we go to our edit page, you can see here's the XML that was brought in, and all the images are correct, even though they were set to scale to frame size. And the reason they're correct is because in the preferences here, mismatched resolution files, is scale entire image to fit. So it's automatically gonna resize the Ultra HD stuff into HD in Resolve, no matter what the XML says. So back into Premiere, and that should explain what was going on there. So just to recap, set to frame size is gonna give you better quality and your XML is gonna come across correctly. So that's how to export a basic timeline. Let's take this up a gear now. I'm gonna to go to this second sequence and we've got a lot more going on in here. Now when this sequence was built, the preferences were set to and here they were set to frame size, okay? So the default media scaling is set to frame size, not scale. So we're getting better quality and we know our XML is gonna be far more successful. Now we've got just basic cuts going on here. We've got a dissolve here. We've got multiple layers. We've got three video layers going on on this one. Uh, over here we've got, has this got anything on it? Nope. Keep going through. And these are just basic cuts. Uh, we could tidy this up a little bit. This is obviously a cutaway sitting on top of another image, but the XML is gonna handle it fine. 
So in this clip here, this is GoPro footage. And what we've done here is we've got a scale of 65, but we've also got repositioning. And what I've done is try to get the edge of the bowl at the top. And I tried to chop off the excess table down the bottom, but also I wanted to line this edge with the edge of the screen. And to do that, I had to rotate minus one degree. All right, so it's just another thing for the XML to have to handle. So we go through here, what else have we got going on? So, oh right, so the picture in picture in here is more complex, so it's got to move on it. So I'll just play that through. And again, we want all that to come across exactly correct in the XML. And uh, this shot here has got a lens flare on it. So we've got a bit of an effect going on there. I'm gonna show you what happens when you export with a lens flare on there. That's a Premier lens flare. Okay, and coming in, oh, by the way, we've got a timeline marker here. So let's just see what that says. It says frame this shot better. Okay, so we've already done that. And then I've got a clip marker here. So let's see what that says. Zoom out, not too much. Okay. So let's put that through. Have we zoomed out? I'm just checking my effects. Ah, so this one's actually got a dynamic move on it already. And this shot here has got a speed ramp on it. So just to show you, that's gonna come across in the XML. And there we go. All right, so I think it goes from, I don't know, 24% or something, and it just kicks up to 50% there. That's it. So what we're gonna do is export an XML. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we say file, export, Final Cut Pro XML. And I'm gonna send that to my XML folder. And I'm gonna call it full grade again. So it's O2 sequence. Press save. And that's done. Ah, so we've got a translation report here. So let's just have a look at what that says. And so the XML report is just a simple text file. So if I click on it, you can see that it says here, uh, sequence 02, prem to resolve sequence at video track three effect lens flare on clip, whatever it's called has not translated. So that's absolutely fine. We know that Resolve is not expecting to see that lens flare via the XML. So the good thing is any effects that you've got on there, you will get a report about what's getting transposed across and what's not. But what I'm also going to do is an export of this sequence. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want to manually check all of these effects. So this might be absolutely critical how that moves. I wanna make sure that it's pixel for pixel accurate. So I'm just gonna do an export of this sequence. Let's just call it, let's put it into our reference file folder. And I'm gonna press save. And I'm also gonna put burnt in time code on there. So let's just bring down here, go to my time code overlay, which is already selected. And that's gonna put the time code of my timeline on there for me. So it's always good for a reference file that. So let's just export that out. And then we can switch to resolve and import the XML. So we're back in resolve, we're on the edit page. Here's the XML from earlier. I'm gonna create a new bin actually and call it XMLs. And I'm gonna put the original one in there. And then I'm gonna to go to this bin here and I'm gonna right click as we did before, timeline import, AFEDL, XML, DRT, whatever we wanna bring. So here's our second XML. Let's open that up. Same dialog box as before. We're gonna keep all the settings the same, particularly use sizing information. Let's say okay, so that's a 1080 timeline. And there is our new XML. So we've just looking good initially. We've got our three layers, three video layers going on. It looks pretty much how I remembered it in Premiere, but let's have a look what's going on. So this all looks pretty good until we get to the 4K stuff. And yeah, we've got quite a big problem going on here. So we've got here, there's our move, which is correct on our picture in picture, but the image scaling is completely out. And the reason for that is because of this preference here. So we need to change the input scaling from scale entire image to fit to be center crop with no resizing. And with no resizing, that means any sizing information is coming from the zoom here, okay? So it's coming from our XML. So if I press save now, what will happen is we don't get an automatic resizing and the images go to how they were in Premiere. So let's have a look through, uh, particularly this one where we did a little bit of a rotate as well. So we can actually see the rotation angle on there is set to one, which is correct. So I think we're in good shape, but how do we check everything accurately? I mean, we've got some slow motion going on down here with speed ramps. So we need to check things like that are good. Let's just play that back. And it looks like we've got the speed change in there. So that's good. But this is why we made that reference file. So we exported a file with the time code burnt in, and we're gonna use that to check our edit has come across correctly with the XML. Now there's a few ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way. If I go to my media pool, I'm gonna right hand click here and say new bin, and I'm gonna call this reference or ref. 
and oh, sorry, I've done that inside the XML folder. So to get rid of that, you just pull it up to the master file and there it is now it's outside of that bin and we can go and find it, which is in here, our reference file. And it was 2A. I'm going to drag that into here. I'm going to go to my edit page. And what I'm going to do is on this pull down here, you've got something called offline. And if I press offline, I can drag any clip or any sequence into this viewer here. And because this was set to offline, what it's doing is it's automatically going to line up with the time code that I'm currently at. So it matches the time code on my timeline. So we're at 140.06. We can see here from the burnt in time code that the source clip is at 140.06. It's not a source clip, it's a reference clip. And because we brought it in with this mode on, that's why it aligns. So when I move this timeline, the clip moves in sync with whatever I'm doing. So we can now go through shot by shot and check it's lined up. And we can see that really easily there. That all these shots on it. So I'm just pressing my up and down arrow keys. I'm just going through each shot. Here's the shot that we lined up with our one degree rotation. That's all looking good. And the one I'm keen to see is the picture in picture. And that is perfectly aligned. So it's really come across really well. There's our lens flare that we know that we can't bring in. So all we've got to do now is go into our effects and add our own lens flare. So we can do that quite easily. Go to our effects library. We can go here, add a lens reflection maybe. Whatever we want to do. And you'll also see the markers come across. So there's it says frame shot better, which is what the sequence marker said in Premiere. And our clip markers come across as well. So it says a zoom out, not too much. So this was a zoom. Let's just see if that's come across, which it has perfectly. And the last thing is our speed ramp. So if I just zoom into our timeline here and highlight our clip, and if I press Command R, we can see our retime here. So it's 24% to start with, then 50, and then 50. So that's perfect. So that's exactly what we wanted. So it's replicated the speed change perfectly. You sometimes get one or 2% mismatch on this, but generally it's in a good place. And you can always override this and manually make adjustments to that. So I'm really pleased with how well that's come in. Everything's looking really good. So don't forget, it's set to frame size in Premiere and in DaVinci Resolve you want in your preferences here to be center crop with no resizing and that way your XMLs will come in really well. And all that's left to do now is switch to the color page. There's all the clips ready to grade. So I hope that's going to help you have a much smoother ride when you're conforming from Premiere into DaVinci Resolve. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.